With the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11's landing on the moon coming up, we figured we'd bring you a little bit of information about the agency that brought it there. NASA is the biggest name in space exploration, although not many know all that much about it. Here, we'll give you exciting, funny, and catastrophic insights into one of America's most incredible gems. This is what you don't know about NASA. Fifteen. The Area Code Not many people know this, but the area code of Kennedy Space Center and the area surrounding it is 321. Now, that may not seem very significant, but if you think about that number in terms of a space launch, surely a countdown launch comes to mind. The area code was supposed to go to an area in Chicago, however, in 1999, a resident of Brevard County in Florida petitioned to have the code given to the Space Coast. He argued that it could help commemorate the impact of the Space Coast on the area, and was successful in convincing the issuers of the code. 14. A Big Problem Okay, this isn't the kind of problem that's detrimental to the agency, but it is a problem that is so far unsolved, and surely bugs the scientists at NASA. In 2006, the agency was using their arcade program, a program that uses a balloon at high altitudes, to try to measure the universe's heating by the first galaxies and stars in the universe, when they came across something interesting. A super strong residual radio source was located using the instruments aboard the balloon, and the signal turned out to be about six times stronger than what theory predicts. Astrophysicists can't figure out the radio source, which is dubbed the space roar, but there's hope that the strange phenomenon will be solved in the future. 13. Funding Alright, so it's not cheap to send vehicles and people to space, design instruments and tools that can work in extreme environments, and pay scientists and engineers to do all of the experimental and design work needed for these programs. So you'd think NASA would get a pretty decent chunk of the federal budget, right? Think again. NASA hardly gets a sliver of the budget, pulling in just 0.4%. Now that actually sounds like it could be pretty significant considering the overall budget is 4.407 trillion in 2019, right? Well, yes, but if you consider that to what the Department of Defense gets, about 13% of the federal budget, 0.04% begins to look like breadcrumbs. It's pretty incredible that they can get it done with so little funding, isn't it? 12. Armageddon Well, it seems that NASA shows the movie Armageddon, you know, the movie about the asteroid headed for Earth, in their management training program. That's right, they show the film to see if their employees can spot the more than 168 problems with the movie. Not just problems, impossibilities. Apparently, there are so many things wrong with the science and other aspects of the film that it makes for the perfect thing to show to see just how keen their employees are at picking out not only the impossibilities, but the improbabilities as well. Exciting stuff. 11. Solar Energy Did you know that without NASA, we might not have the solar panels and advances in using solar energy that we have today? You see, NASA had to look into harnessing the power of the sun for many of their missions, including the International Space Station, because, well, there's not many ways to get power up in space. Last we checked, there are no readily available electrical outlets in space, and figuring out how to capture the sun's energy was helped, in huge ways, by the space exploration firm. Photovoltaic cells were first used on the Vanguard satellite to replace a primary battery source, and they've been further advanced since then. Photovoltaic cells are what most refer to as solar cells, which is what many affix to their roofs and in other places to reduce their energy consumption costs. Without NASA, who knows where the alternative energy would stand today? 10. NASA will text you. If you want to, you can enroll in a text program where NASA will send you a text message anytime the International Space Station passes over your location on the planet. The app is called Spot the Station, and as long as you've got it before the station zips over you, it'll send you a notification to tell you to watch out for the second brightest object in the sky, besides the moon. 9. NASA pays people to stay in bed Yes, that's right. NASA takes people who qualify and pays them to stay in bed. For how long? 70 days. Why? To study the effects of weightlessness on the human body. Each participant is put in a bed that is angled head down 6 degrees and is made to stay there for more than 2 months. If that sounds a bit ridiculous to you, you're not alone. But consider the payoff that comes of doing something like this. NASA pays its participants in this lonely testing study $18,000 if they complete it. We definitely could use $18,000 to put in our bank accounts. So hey, maybe this isn't so crazy after all. 8. Bill Nye if you're old enough to remember Bill Nye the Science Guy, or if you have seen the show Bill Nye Saves the World, you'll know just who we're talking about. Bill Nye is a lover of science and a great appreciator of space. 
He loved space so much that he actually applied to the astronaut corps four different times and was rejected every last one of them. That didn't make him love space any less though, and instead, he just went about learning about and celebrating the great Final Frontier in a different way. If Bill Nye can't make it as an astronaut, who the heck can? Superhumans? 7. What a screw up. One would think that our first visit to the moon and the moonwalk would be extremely important to NASA, and that the tapes from the mission would have been highly valued. One would think. But in the 1980s, NASA believes that, according to standard procedure, the raw, unprocessed tapes from Apollo 11 were first erased, then written over. This was found out when a team of NASA retirees tried to locate the recordings in the early 2000s. As technology had advanced light years from 1969 by then, the plan was to make new, digital copies of the tapes. However, they were never found, and the researchers figured out that they had, more than likely, been deleted. Luckily, someone in Australia had been taping the moon landing, and it wasn't half bad, so the researchers borrowed those tapes, enhanced them, and all became mostly well with the universe. 6. Speaking of Apollo 11, did you know that the smartphones of today have more computer power than the computers used for the Apollo 11 mission? There were four different computers responsible for ensuring the mission ran smoothly, and they were very ahead of their time, at the time. Actually, the strength of the computers wasn't rivaled until 1977, when the Apple II was released. Although the iPhones and droids of today are more powerful than the computers used during the mission, the AGC, or Apollo Guidance Computer, had a critical advantage. They couldn't crash. Imagine being mid-space flight and needing a software update or having the computers crash altogether, as phones of today sometimes do. That would be quite catastrophic. So it's better that they use what they had at the time, rather than technology that powers the tiny pocket computers of today. 5. Lawsuit over Mars Hopefully, this served as a warning to the planet-visiting, space-exploring entity that is NASA. Way back in 1997, when the Pathfinder landed with the Sojourner rover on Mars, the three angry men came forward and stated that NASA had trespassed on what was apparently their planet. The men, Mustafa Kali, Abdullah Al-Umari, and Adam Ismail, claimed that the planet was theirs, and it had belonged to their ancestors, and they said they could prove it. They met with the prosecutor, showed him their documents, or proof, and he told them to get lost and informed them of the jail time and punishments that could result of their suing again. 4. NASA and the FBI Did you know that NASA has helped out the FBI with their own video surveillance technologies? In fact, VSAR, or Video Image Stabilization and Registration, was a direct, helping hand that they extended to the Investigation Bureau. VSAR, while an older technology now, was new to the FBI back in the early 2000s, and has aided in the solving of many crimes ever since. The technology is a crime-fighting tool that helps to stabilize and bring into focus security footage and footage captured by the dash cams aboard police cars. It's now also used by other types of security services and has been adapted for the military as well. 3. Office of Planetary Protection So, NASA has an office known as the Office of Planetary Protection, which may sound like some kind of defense system in case we ever get invaded by aliens. Well, that's kind of the case, and it goes both ways, but it's not as dramatic and exciting as you may think. The office helps to defend other planets, moons, asteroids, and all other kinds of space-bound objects from contamination by us and our life here. It also helps to protect us from contamination from space, other planets, etc. So yeah, it may sound like it could be a bit ridiculous, but the Office of Planetary Protection is a real part of NASA with a real purpose. Pretty impressive, isn't it? 2. Major Fail During the Mars Climate Orbiter mission in 1999, something went wrong and NASA lost communications with the orbiter when it went into orbital insertion. The orbiter was lost, either to the Martian atmosphere, or it got shot back out into space, and a pretty simple mistake was found to be the cause. One piece of the software, given by Lockheed Martin, produced its calculations in the United States customary units. Another part of the software, which was provided by NASA, expected the calculations to be in SI units, the International System of Units. Thus, the calculations were interpreted by the computer wrong, and the mission failed pretty miserably. We've seen some fantastic facts about NASA so far, and we still have one more to go. But first, we'd like to ask, what is your best memory of NASA or of human beings' adventures into space? If you're young or don't have any memories of our quest into space, what most interests you about space travel? Let us know in the comments below. 1. Their vehicle assembly building is ridiculous. If you've ever seen pictures or video footage of Kennedy Space Center, you'll probably have noticed the massive building with the NASA emblem and the American flag on it. That is the Vehicle Assembly Building, and it's used to assemble various space vehicle components. By volume, 
It's one of the largest buildings in the world, as it measures 129,428,000 cubic feet. And at one point, it was the tallest building in all of Florida. It is still the tallest single-story building on Earth, and it is also the tallest building not in an urban area in the US. Want to hear something pretty darn crazy? The building is so big inside that, on some of the more humid Florida days, it has its own weather. Rain clouds will form near the roof of the vehicle assembly building, and without moisture reduction systems in place, things could get pretty wild inside. They also have plenty of other equipment inside to keep the building's weather under control. It's impressive that the thing is so big that they have to in the first place. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to go ahead and give it a like. Subscribe to our channel below, or by clicking on our logo right here, and check out this video that we're sure you're going to love.